and never say you hate discipline. Now I'm telling you from the get-go, if you're gonna start trying to make good habits and break some bad habits, never say, never say, I hate discipline. And never say, I don't have any self-control. Because the truth is, discipline is your friend, not your enemy. Discipline is a tool that God has given us that will help us be all that we say we want to be. Doesn't have to be your master. Discipline doesn't have to become a law that says every time you must do this certain thing this certain way, but we have to be able to say yes to God and no to self, and very often that requires discipline. No discipline for the present seems joyous. Nevertheless, later on, you say, well, Joyce, I was kind of hoping you'd talk about prosperity tonight. I have some financial problems. <laughs> now, don't make me come out there and get you. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you have financial problems, how many of you know that it's probably partially because of lack of discipline? <laughs> Do I have any people that tell the truth in here tonight? How many of you know? Well, it's not my fault. Well, we, gonna, we got a habit for that too, so just <laughs> hang around. Forming the habit of taking responsibility for your own messes. Ooh, you better come to every session. I think I feel it. <laughs> I think I can feel it. Making good habits and breaking bad habits. You want me to read you all the chapters? Let me just, let me just tell you. The anatomy of a habit. Get started now. The God habit, breaking bad habits, how, habits of, how words and thoughts affect habits, the habit of being decisive, healthy habits, the happy habit, the habit of faith, the habit of excellence, the habit of being responsible, the habit of generosity, the hurry habit, emotional habits, the confidence habit, the habit of adding value to others, the habit of discipline. How many of you think you need them all? <laughs> Me too, I'm glad I'm here, amen. <laughs> You know, normally nothing good happens accidentally. <laughs> you can catch disease, but you can't catch health. Very simple principle. All right, now it's very important that you see yourself and begin to believe that you have the fruit of self-control in your life and that God has given you a friend called discipline. So don't ever say, I don't have any self-control. I just can't control myself. If I eat one cookie, I gotta eat a dozen. I mean, for crying out loud. You are born again, full of the Holy Ghost, and you tell me you cannot resist a cookie? You are trying to cast out devils and you don't have authority over a cookie? I rebuke you, Satan. I am a child of God, and I will not put up with that. And then you go by the cookie. <laughs> you say, well, Joyce, tell me, what is my problem? <laughs> you don't know how to think. That's why I've got so many messages and books on thinking and can't preach a message without talking about thinking because our behavior follows our thoughts. Now, in Romans 6, verse 2, it says that we're dead to sin. Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Everybody say, I am dead to sin. I am dead to sin. You know what it means to be dead to sin? It means you no longer have a relationship with it. When you're dead, you don't have a relationship with anything. <laughs> Nothing. All relationships end for the dead person. You no longer have a relationship with food. You don't have a relationship with shopping. No relationship with people. You're dead. So he says we're dead to sin. So that means that you have no relationship with all these bad habits that you've let control you. You need to just start saying to them, I have no relationship with you. You have no authority over me. I'm dead to you. You say, but I'm not, but I'm telling you, you are. You say, I'm not. I say, yes, you are. You say, no, I'm not. I say, yes, you are. You say, no, I'm not. Well, you know what? You are spiritually. 
you are a spirit you have a soul <laughs> you live in a body you're not just a body it's your body and your soul that gets addicted to things and gets bad habits your spirit is free except that we let the soul oppress it we let the soul choke it out and crowd it out and if we get full enough of the word the word of God is food for your spirit just like the food that you eat keeps you healthy in your body the word of God is not only food for your spirit but it also will save your soul James 1 says when you approach the word with meekness and you receive it it has the power to save your soul you know what the words done for me it has saved me emotionally I'm not wounded and hurt anymore I don't act like a maniac all the time because I've got all these wounds in my life from the way that I was raised the word has saved my mind it's renewed my mind it's taught me how to do what I'm telling you tonight you begin by thinking God says I'm dead to sin and I am dead to sin this has no authority over me it has no power over me and I with the help of God am going to form good habits so I can be everything that God wants me to be now in verse 11 Romans 6 11 remember verse 2 says we're dead to sin and then Romans 6 verse 11 says even so consider yourself dead to sin the word consider is a process of thinking so we might as well just say even so think of yourself as someone who is dead to sin and your relationship to it is broken but see yourself as alive to God living in unbroken fellowship with Jesus Christ somebody give God praise there's addictions in many areas drugs alcohol smoking shopping eating disorders people cut themselves they're addicted to pornography other sexual addictions OCD disorders which is obsessive compulsive disorders you know what I believe I believe that any addiction or obsession began with a habit and you know how habits get started especially if we're talking about bad habits we're doing something once twice three four five six seven eight and now all of a sudden and you have this thought this is getting out of hand Th this is getting out of hand first Peter 5 8 I love it be well balanced for your adversary the devil roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour the Bible says that we need to resist him at his onset so what would happen if when we get that little thing from God this is getting out of hand you're doing this too much you need to cut back what would happen if we would take that as a warning signal now God's telling me that I'm about to get myself in trouble and stop right then then it wouldn't be hard then there would be no addiction to break no going through all the stuff we have to go through to get over the things no spending five years trying to get out of debt because you spent a year getting in debt <laughs> how many of you know that it's easier to gain weight than it is to lose it <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> anybody who has an addiction or some kind of an obsession in your life something that you would say I just cannot control this there was a time now listen to me there was a time in your life when you could have and you didn't and I'm only telling you this because going forward I don't want you focusing on everything you did wrong in the past we're closing the door on that we're not gonna live in regrets regret does not do anything except steal the energy that you need to have a victory regret doesn't do anything doesn't help anything Dave is wonderful at not regretting things <laughs> well something happened the other day and I said oh I wish that we would have done that years ago and he said not gonna regret it and it is it's just a waste of time regretting anything is a waste of time it just steals all your oh, I regret the way I've lived and I regret I regret that I let myself get in debt 
and I regret that I let myself, and I regret, and I regret, regret. Well, I'm not saying not to be sorry that you did the wrong thing, but, but you need to be sorry and then go on. I'm encouraging you to focus on the good thing that you want to do and stop big S-T-O-P focusing on the bad thing you don't want to do. The Bible says in Romans 12, 21, don't let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with good. So that means that we can overcome bad habits by focusing on making good habits. Brand new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits, I believe you're really gonna be encouraged like never before that you don't have to fight with your bad habits, that you can simply overcome them by making good habits, and God wants to help you do that. So be sure you get my book, and also there's lots of people you could buy this for, and they're gonna really appreciate it. God bless you, have a great day. Once I started taking care of what I had, I started to break my spending habit. As a family, we made the God habit. It's like living in a different house. This has affected every area of my life. Did you know that focusing on developing good habits will help you break the bad ones? Today, we're offering Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits for your donation of any amount. Call us right now, toll free. 1-800-727-9673. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Hershey, Pennsylvania, August 7th through 9th with worship by Fused Worship. And Toronto, Ontario, August 21st through 23rd with worship by Israel Houghton. All sessions are free. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. No matter who you are, what you did, or what's happened before. God has your comeback already planned, and it's going to be glorious. We've all had times in our lives when things just don't seem to go as we had planned. I want you to know that it's never too late for your fresh start. You can begin again, and I want to show you how. You can begin again. Available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries. Welcome to our medical clinic in Nairobi, Kenya. This is an amazing place and I'm really excited to be able to tell you about some of the things that we've been seeing going on. We've seen several people coming through here who without this free medical clinic could be having some very severe problems including losing their legs and even one tiny baby who is very near to the point of death. So we're so grateful that you have sent us to be here. All these medical volunteers, they're giving their time, they're paying their own way to get here. And then also those of you who help make all of this possible, paying for the medications and everything that it takes to make it happen. But you hear the noise behind me also. That is in the tent where they're talking about ministry. They're letting people know why we're here. And that's not only to help them with their physical needs today, but to share the love of Christ. And as you can hear, it's going really well. People respond wonderfully. So it's such a joy and a pleasure for us to be here. We're so glad that you sent us. In fact, you ought to come and join us sometime. We'd love to see you. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.